tonight, I want to uh, minister or, or, and, and speak uh, from this topic that I believe we all can relate to. Um, if we're not in this place now, we've been there. Um, if we haven't been there, I promise you in one season, one lifetime or the next, you're going to go through a time where you fight change, where you wrestle with change. And so tonight I want to deal with the fight to change. I want to deal with the fight to change because I'm finding out that for many of us, changing is one of the most difficult things to do. And if we be honest, the reason why we're not so quick to change or we're not so willing to change or we don't put ourselves in a position to change is because we do not believe that what's on the other side is better than what we have right now. And so because we've gotten so comfortable and we're stuck where we are and, and, and we are pretty much used to where we are, how we are, what we do, how we do it, the people that we have around us, because we're so used to that, then when anything comes that, that tries to even hint at change. If any person comes that even represents something different, if there's any ideal that is presented to us that, that represents something new, we fight against it. We wrestle against it. We put resistance up against it. And I'm telling you, the longer that we fight change, the longer we wrestle with the change, the longer we refuse to bend and to be pliable, we hinder one of the greatest moves of God that he has in store for us from taking place. When we're so stuck with being where we are, uh, 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 we will miss where God wants to take us. We will miss it if we continue to wrestle with the new wrestle with changing when, when, when something is changed, that means it is made different. Uh, when something or someone is changed, it is altered. It, 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 you know, when you change your bed, you are putting on new, uh, a, a new covering. Come on. When, when you change your bed, you are, are putting on a clean, a clean sheet. You're putting on fresh linen. And that is what God desires to do for many of us. But the fight is within ourself. You know, when we talk change, we automatically go to um, a geographical change or, you know, uh, 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 we talk about movement. We, we deal with moving from one place to another. But, 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 but many of us, that the change that has to take place is a change on the inside. Uh, our, our attitudes have to change. Our dispositions have to change. Our mindsets and ideals and the way we are used to doing things and the way that we think it has to change. Our hearts have to change. And we're fighting it and we fight anything or anyone that represents that newness. I was uh, just teaching the master's class on this past Thursday. And if you didn't sign up for the class, you are missing something powerful. We're going to do it again in um, September. But this past lesson, we dealt with trust. And I was talking to those that signed up about trust. And I told them, I said, whenever I come into this office and I sit in the chair, I don't look in back at the seat or check the wheels or check the handles first, you know, to make sure everything is sturdy before I sit down. I come right in the office and I plop myself right in this chair. Why? Because I trust that this chair is going to hold me up. Whenever I go and, and go outside and put my key in the ignition, I trust that when I put my key in and I turn that key, my car is going to start. 
Why do I trust that the car is going to do what it's supposed to do? Why do I trust that the chair is going to do what it's supposed to do? Because I trust that the manufacturer built it to, to function properly. I trust the manufacturer. Are you all following me? The reason why many of us are fighting change and fighting new and don't want to break and don't want to bend and don't want to let go is if we be honest, we don't trust the manufacturer. We don't trust the God that we talk about, that we testify about, that we read about, that we pray about. We don't trust the God that says, I promise to perfect everything that concerns you. My life, your life is in my hands and I I'm going to make sure that whatever I do is going to work for your good. We really don't trust what God says because we do not trust the manufacturer. We put more trust in ourselves than we do in God. And so God has been dealing with me in this new season that I'm in. Listen, you can't fight change. You're not going to be able to cross over into this new season, into this new territory, into this new relationship. All the things I'm doing new for you, Siobhan, you're not going to be able to fight newness and keep trying to do things the way you're used to doing it. Me and my fiance, we're in the grocery store and I am used to going to the grocery store and pushing the basket and doing my own shopping. Will McMillan, I see you, man. I love you. I'm used to doing my own thing. I'm used to put my groceries in the car by myself, you know, unless I go to Walmart and then I have a special friend at Walmart that looks out for me. His name is Vaughn. Shout out to Vaughn that makes sure he looks out. But if Vaughn ain't there, I'm loading up my groceries. I'm doing what I got to do. Why? Because this is what I have to do. You know, I was a single woman. And so now... I'm in the grocery store with my fiance and I'm just, you know, pushing the basket. And he said, I got it. I got it. And I said, oh, no, I got it. And he said, no, I got the basket. You go ahead and get the stuff. I got it. And I said, okay. And I would go and pick up something and put it in the basket. And then out of habit, I'm walking right behind the shopping cart again. And I'm driving and pushing the cart. I'm pushing the cart because that's what I'm used to doing. And here I have a man right there that keeps telling me, I got it. You ain't got to push the cart. The cart is getting heavy. Let me do it. And I am fighting with him to put my hands on the handle because I am used to pushing the cart myself. Then we go outside and here I am trying to unload the groceries and I'm putting it in the back of the truck. And I'm trying to lift the case of water. He's standing right there and he's saying, Go ahead in the car. I got it. I got it. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to help you. And he has to almost put like a little more bass in his throat. I got it. Go ahead and sit in the car. Here, God has sent me some help. He sent somebody to come and lift the load and carry the, 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 the heavy, you know, burden of doing things that I had to do before because I didn't have anybody else to do it. Now God has sent someone and here I keep talking about, let me do it. Let me do it. And he's saying, I got it. I have to relinquish my desire to control and to do it and trust him enough to say he can do it. He can do it much better than me. Am I talking to anybody? I'm in the car. He, he's driving the car. He's driving. He's driving. And I'm trying to tell him how to drive from the passenger seat. I got to make it practical so you all can see this. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to drive from the seat of the passenger position because I'm used to being in the driver chair. That's the problem with many of us. We want to drive. And God is saying, I got the wheel. I can't have your hand on the wheel and my hand because both of us driving, we're going to get in an accident. Trust me that I know the way. I don't need your help. Trust that 
I know the changes that has to be made in your life and you are settling for where you are now and where you are now is nothing in comparison. What you're doing now is nothing in comparison. The things you've accomplished is nothing in comparison. The things that you've experienced is nothing in comparison to what I want to show you, to what I want to give you, to what I want to deposit into you, to what I want to release into your hands, but you've got to stop fighting change. The more you fight change is the more you fight me. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Give up your need to control that tug of war, that fight. No, I got it. No, I'm going to give it to you, God, but let me have this back. No, no, no. You know what? Well, I'm going to give you some, but let me hold on to a little bit of rope. I can't give it to you all the way because I'm still I'm still not sure with how it's going to be if I let go totally. Trusting God means you have to let go totally. It is a dying of yourself. It is the killing of of your flesh. We 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 want to know God in the power of his resurrection. We want to know him and and in all of that, but we never want to deal with the killing. We never want to deal with the crucifixion. We never want to deal with the 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 the, the, the death. We never want to deal with that. We love the resurrection, but we don't want to deal with the crucifixion process. There is a killing. There is a dying to oneself that must happen. Or you'll never experience the, the, the greater that God has for you. Let's go look at, I want y'all to see something in the, in the word of God. Is this blessing anybody already? Let's go look at the word. Uh, I want y'all to see this. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Somebody type it. Genesis the 32nd chapter, and let's look at verse 24 through 28. Some of us, we love to say it. This, this is how I do it. This is how I've always been doing it. This is how, this is what I'm used to doing. This is how I'm used to living. This is how I'm used to, this is what I, I used to eat. This is what I'm used to. And it's like, man, you're so used to doing this one thing. Don't you understand? There's so much more you're missing out on. I've always done it this way. I've always said it this way. And God is like, you're limiting yourself and you're limiting me. I'm not a God that can be put in a box. Stop putting limits on me by refusing and being stubborn and being so set on doing it your way. If I became so set and saying, I got to stay here, I got to stay in Virginia. I got to keep doing what I, what, you know, this is where I'm going to be. This is where I've been all my life, you know, and, 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 and this is how it's going to be until I die. I would have missed out on, 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 on something so beautiful. If I wasn't willing to bend and change and let go and lose. There's some things I'm losing, but I'm gaining so much than what I'm losing. I'm giving up a whole house and everything in this house. My honey don't want me to bring nothing. I don't want you to bring anything. Everything new. We get everything new. But but this is, I, I, I love this lamp and I love this picture and I, I love this mirror and I, and I love these. I don't want you to bring anything. I don't want you to bring nothing old. I want to bless you with new everything, all things new. I don't need no representation of old coming into our new relationship. But, 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 but this here, this, this, this is close to me. No, you got to be willing to let go. I'm uh, you, that was nice for that season, but that is not coming over into this new season. It, 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 it did what it was supposed to do for that season. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Genesis, let's look at something. 32. And let's look at verse 24. I'm going to read it from the Message Bible so that you all can see the picture. All right. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Let's look at uh, the 24th verse. If you haven't shared this yet, share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. And, and just title it, Stop Fighting Change. 
Stop fighting change. As you're fighting change, you're fighting God. God wants to do something new and you've got to relinquish control. You've got to take your hands off of it. You've got to stop trying to drive the car when he's already in the driver's seat. 24th verse, Jacob stayed behind by himself and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. And that is what God is doing to so many of us right now. We are so strong-willed and we won't bend that in order for God to really bring about the change that he wants to, to give us, he's got to allow us to go through breaking. He's got to allow things to come and cause pain. He's got to allow some stuff to come and cause our hips to get out of place for him to do what he desires to do because we're so strong-willed. I mean, we strong as oxes. Here, Jacob is wrestling with God. You know you stubborn when you wrestle with God. How could he do that? The same way many of us wrestle with God now. The same way we fight God's instructions. The same way God tells us, I got something for you to do. And we say, no, nah, God, pick somebody else. The same way God is tugging at us in our sleep at night and we, ref and we refuse to wake up and we stay in our bed and keep our eyes closed. The same way God tells us to walk away and we refuse to walk away. The same way God tells us to say this and we refuse to say it. The same way God tells us to be quiet and we keep on talking. The same way God tells us to align ourselves with this one and we say, no, nah, we ain't doing that. I don't know them like that. Or no, nah, we ain't sewing there because I don't know who that person is. Th that's how we fight God. Jacob fought God so much and he was, the Bible says that he was prevailing. Are y'all seeing this? He was prevailing. He's fighting with God and he fought so long that God deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. God is deliberately throwing some of you all's hip out of place because you won't bend to what he's trying to get you to. He says to him, let me go because it's daybreak. And Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not letting you go until you bless me, until you do what I want you to do. And God says to him, what is your name? And he answered, my name is Jacob. I, this is who I am, Jacob. Jacob meaning trickster. Jacob meaning supplanter. Jacob meaning conniver. Jacob meaning schemer. You all know the story about Jacob. And for those of you who don't know about Jacob, he lived up to his name. Jacob was one that, 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 you know, he was so sneaky and he was so deceptive. He came out of his mother's womb, grabbing at his brothers, his twin brothers heel because he wanted what wasn't his. He already had this spirit of covetousness and this desire to take what wasn't his from his own brother. He's already living up to his name. And then he finangled his brother's birthright. He took Esau's birthright for a bowl of soup. And then he deceived his blind father and he stole the blessing that rightfully belonged to Esau as the firstborn. He was a deceiver. He was a trickster. He was, he, he, he was a man that had some serious issues like many of us. And here is his encounter to be made new. Here is his moment for God to turn him into a new man. And he fought it. He wrestled with God. I don't want to be new. I don't want to put down the old. I don't want to take on a new name. I don't want to change what I used to do. I don't want to change. I mean, change what I'm doing. I want to keep doing it my way. I want to keep having control. I want to keep on. I love you, Prophet Alexis. I love you. I want to keep on doing it my way. How many of us can be honest enough to say that's what we've told the Lord? I don't want to change. Stop pulling on me. Stop tugging on me. Stop trying to, you know, uh, use me to do things. I don't want you to use me. I don't want to say yes to you. I don't want to submit to your will. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be called. And, and, and side note, many people that 
are really called to do something great and awesome, we fight it. We fight it. And many fight it because we understand the responsibility that comes with it. And for some of us, we just don't feel qualified. We don't feel worthy. I'm nervous about folks that sign up to, 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 to do something big. I'm nervous about people that's like, yeah, 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 I want to do it. I want to preach. I want to prophesy. I want to go. Give me the mic. Let me say it. Let me do it. Let me pastor. Huh? I was just talking to somebody the other day, and they were just talking about how, you know, this is their season to step out and pastor a church. And I said, you know, pastoring is serious. Leading people is nothing to play with. And, you know, they was agreeing. It was like, yeah, you know, and I'm, and I'm just saying, you know, when you step into that type of, uh, 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 of assignment, you know, it's a killing of yourself. You got to be willing to be inconvenienced. You got to love people more than you love you. It ain't just about preaching. Preaching is the smallest part of pastoring. It is shepherding people's lives. It is smelling like them. A shepherd smells like sheep. And so... Jacob is probably wrestling with becoming new because he understood that what came along with being a new creature. And for many of you, that's, that's it for you. You don't want nothing new because you're afraid and you understand that too much is given, much is required. You understand that saying yes to God comes with the price. And yes, it does. Yes, there's a great mandate. Yes, there's a great responsibility. Yes, it's a, a great price. But guess what, y'all? There's a great reward. You don't get the reward staying where you are. You don't get the blessing staying and, and continuing to walk as an old man. When the Bible says when you become in Christ, you become a new creature. You've got to die to that old person. Jacob, I'm trying to show you that your blessing will not come as long as you continue to stay the name that you are. As long as you continue to walk in this identity as a trickster, as a schemer, as a supplanter, as a conniver. I am trying to shift you from a trickster to change your name to a prince, to Israel, which means the power of God. I am trying to usher you into a season, glory to God, that your lineage will be blessed forever. Hallelujah! I am trying not to just bless you, but I'm trying to bless your seed. Siobhan, if you would have held on to this old season and kept on doing what you was doing because you thought this was it, you would have missed out on a whole new family and this man that just loves you and loves you for you and don't want nothing from you, don't care nothing about you being a preacher and you traveling. He cares nothing about that. He loves you. And not only does he love you, but he loves your children. He loves what you do. He supports you. He's one of your biggest fans. He's, he, he sows into you. He on cyber church logging in, talking about preach, babe. And, 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 and you, you would have missed out on one of the biggest blessings I wanted to give you if you were willing to let go of this. I got to use myself as an example because I need you all to understand that this works. The worst thing for a preacher to do is give a message that never works for them personally. Now you're just saying a sermon. No, give me a word that you've applied to your personal life. I'm telling you all what's working for me. I've had to let go and give up being in the driver chair. I had to let go of wanting to push the basket. I had to let go of, you know, this is how I do it. I'm a single woman. I take care of myself. I take care of my kids. We accomplish this on our own. It's been this way for five years. I pass it by myself. It's been me and God. And God is like, all right, I'm trying to bring something to you. What you going to do? That's for somebody that's single up here tonight. I'm trying to give all the nuggets I can. That's for somebody that's single tonight. You want companionship. You want to be in a union with somebody, but you ain't willing to let go your, 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 your individuality. You ain't willing to let go being in control. You ain't willing to let go of your independence. You ain't willing to let go of what you want. 
You don't want it to be we. You still want I. Come on. He wrestled with God so, I, I, I mean, so long and so intense that God had to throw his hip out of joint. God asked him, now what's your name? He gives the same old name. My name is Jacob. And the Bible says that God at that moment changes his name and he changes his name to Israel. And Jacob names the place where this transformation took place as Peniel or Peniel, which is where I've seen God face to face. God wants to give you an experience where you see him face to face and he changes your life forever, but you've got to stop wrestling with him and stop wrestling with yourself. Stop wrestling with your past. Stop wrestling with your identity. Stop wrestling with your flaws. Stop wrestling with what you think you know. You've got to stop fighting change and let God do something new in your life. How many people that did God change? He changed them to get a blessing to them, to use them mightily. He changed, uh, 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 who was it? He changed Saul, Saul the persecutor. Saul's name meant uh, uh, asking. Whatever he asked, people gave him what he asked for. He was a man of, uh, 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 that people listened to. He was a man of influence. He was a leader. And all Saul had to do was say it and people listened to what he had to say. Here, God changes who he was. The, the one that persecuted, the one whose name means asking, and he changes him to a man by the name of Paul. And guess what Paul's name meant? Little. He changes you from this proud man that can ask and get and do whatever you wanted to do to little, to a man of humility, so that God can use him to preach the gospel, to win souls. To lay hands on sick people and they recover. To have a greater impact. But a change had to take place. And in order for that change to come, he had to get knocked off of his beast. He had to, the pride had to be broken. In order for him to really understand humility. And that's when he preaches so that I'll never become exalted. That's when he preaches that is no good in me. He got it. He got the lesson. This puffed up man. Now, every time he talks, he talks about how he's nothing. I'm just an ambassador of God. I am a prisoner of God. I am a, a voice for God. He, he understands that he's little now and that God can use him to do much. Simon, Simon, your name Simon meant loud mouth. Simon was one that he just talked a lot of. He, he was one that I ain't going nowhere. You know, he was the loud mouth. He, he talked out of his mouth out of turn. I'm not going to leave you, Jesus. I'm going to be right here. And as soon as it's time for him to stand for the Lord, the Bible says that he denied God. And what did God do? God changed his name. God changed him from Simon to Peter, from loud mouth to Peter, meaning rock, to someone who was solid. He changes him to Peter, the, the name where he has now built his church on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had to change them in order to use them mightily. In order for God to really get maximum impact out of your life, he's got to change you and you can't fight the change. You got to stop fighting the change. Stop fighting this new season that God is trying to give to you, that God is trying to get you to. That God is trying to release into your hands because you're so set on, this is what I'm used to. This is who I am. This is how I've always been. This is what makes me feel good. Your flesh has got to die. Who you are has got to die. How you've been raised and how we've been taught, some of that may have to die. 
Some things that we've been brought up doing don't always mean it was the right thing. There's some things that has to die. There's some ideals that we hold on to that has to die. That has to, you have to change. Stop wrestling with God. You wonder why now your hip is out of socket. It's because God is saying, I'm tired of fighting with you. I'm trying to get a blessing to you and you're in the way. Let me change your name. Let me change your life. Let me change your character. Let me change your mindset. Let me change how people view you. When they saw who Paul was, they couldn't believe it. When they saw who Peter was from the one he started off being, people couldn't believe it. Israel, the one that used to be Jacob, we can't believe that this is the same person. But when God does it, he does a great work. He does a great work and he does a mighty thing. He changes how you even look. Stop fighting it and stop fighting people that God is sending into your life to bring change. This is a word for somebody. You've pushed away some good folks. Not because they were bad to you, but their presence didn't make you feel good. Their voice didn't make you feel good. Oh yeah, you ran away from them. You were mean to them on purpose. I'm talking to somebody right now. You have ruined some good relationships. You have even walked away from God ordained people in your life because they were sent to help you change. And you weren't ready. You didn't want it. My prayer is that God will give you another chance. I pray that tonight this word is ministering to your heart. That you would even call them back and apologize. This is for somebody right now. I feel the anointing of the Lord as I am ministering on this line. I need you to call them back and say, you know what? I'm sorry. All you wanted was good for me. You didn't mean me no harm. I, I wasn't ready to receive it then. I couldn't swallow it then. I didn't know that that's what I needed. Nobody ever told me that's what was wrong. Nobody ever showed me another way. And so because you came talking different, I looked at you as the enemy. When actually you were the one that God sent to help me get to my new place. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's somebody here. You need to make some calls. You need to make some calls. Call back and say sorry. They didn't mean you no harm. Yeah, but but pastor, it, they, they, how they talked to me, didn't, it didn't feel good. And it just, you know, it ain't set right with me. It didn't set right because it's not what you were used to. It didn't feel good to you because it's not what you wanted. The, 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 the language they use, you weren't familiar with it. And so you automatically put them in the category of enemy. You automatically assumed that they were sent to, to, because they were jealous of you or they didn't want what was best for you or they, no, 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 no. They were sent to be a blessing to you. Call back, call back. Call back. Call back. Glory to God. I don't know if I'm still on Instagram. Can you all tell me if I'm still on? I think they logged me off. Somebody tell me you're still on or you're not still on because if not, I need to log back in. Call them back. Can somebody type and tell me if I'm still on or not on Instagram? Because I, I need to finish getting this word out. I want to pray. I want to pray. This word is ministering to people tonight. And I believe that change is here. Change is here. Glory to God. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Change is here. And I believe that somebody tonight is convicted. Somebody is, somebody is convicted right now. And they're saying, yeah, this word was for me. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Some of y'all, you're, you're, you're guilty by way of default. You're repeating the cycle of, of what you saw. You're doing the same thing you saw your mom do. You're doing the same thing you saw your dad do. You're doing the same thing you see everybody else around you do. Come on, I'm guilty. 
I'm guilty. I get mad for no reason. Come on. I, I just, you know, I get an attitude just for nothing. And I ain't going to change how I am. I, you know, yeah, I'm moody. No, I don't get up in the morning and say good morning. I don't know why I don't say good morning. I just don't feel like doing it. Because it's just what you used to doing. I'm talking to somebody. No, I don't feel like smiling. Smile for what? This is who I am. When a smile, you never know. A smile can get you through some doors that you would never qualify for with, your, with a mean face. Just changing your disposition could usher you into a new season. I'm helping somebody tonight. Just being nice. Just speaking. I don't speak to strangers. I, I, I don't do that. I don't let new people in. I, I don't do that. I ain't never done that. Where your blessing may be a, may come from that new person. Your blessing may come from just saying hello. If y'all knew how many blessings, how, how much I've gotten just from smiling and hugging and kissing people, I don't even know. I have people so money into me, inbox, you don't know, but you ran into me in the store. I just had one lady say, you, I, you ran, I ran into you in, in Hobby Lobby and you were so nice to me. I got to sow some money into you because you were just so nice and genuine and you loved on me like I didn't even, like you knew who I was. I didn't know who she was, y'all. It didn't matter. Maybe she needed a hug that day. They fuss at me about kissing everybody. Stop kissing everybody. You will get something. I'll be all right. I just believe God got me covered. You just kiss and hug on everybody. I believe that's a part of ministry. Some people ain't never got a hug and kiss before. What, what if I was so set on, all right, I'm not talking to strangers. I'm not smiling with them. I'm not sitting with them. I don't want to talk to them. God is trying to get a blessing to you. But you have to stop fighting change. Has this blessed anybody tonight? It blessed me all over again. I'm learning. I'm learning. I can't do the things I used to do. I got to relinquish control. He got it. Let him do it. Let him do it. And I'm telling myself, Siobhan, let him do it. Let him do it. He's here now. You done prayed for him. Let him do it. God sent him to be a blessing. Get out the driver's seat. I'm talking to y'all. Get out the driver's seat. Stop wrestling with God. You ain't going to win. You're not going to win. Jonah, you're not going to win. If I got to allow you to get seasick, even after you get seasick, I'm going to still let you get thrown up overboard and you still going to do what I called you to do. You're not going to win when I have something for you to do. When I'm trying to get a blessing to you. So you might as well submit. Trust the manufacturer. Trust that I know you better than you know yourself. Trust that my plans towards you are good. They're not evil. My plans towards you are to give you an expected end. Trust me. Trust me with change. Trust me with your new. Trust me. Just like you trust that chair. You trust that car to start. You trust the sun to shine. Trust me to do what I'm called to do in your life. If you've been blessed tonight, I want you to sow. And I'm going to pray. I feel change. But I also feel that you all want to be a blessing. And I'm going to let you do it. I want you to go now. I want you to go now. And whatever that is that God has placed on your heart to sow into this word, um, I want you to do it. Don't miss this moment to sow. Don't miss this moment to sow. God has spoken to many of you directly. This was a rhema word that spoke directly to you. And you dare not let a word from God come and you not sow into the vessel that has released the word of the Lord. 
And I'm being very bold with this. You know, when she's asking for money for herself, I'm the vessel that God has used to release this word. And God has also released me to receive seed. And I believe that many of you are saying, I received this word, Pastor Sellers, and I want to sow. Look at my fiance, first one saying, I'm sowing. This is what God does when you release your hands, relinquish control, and let God do it. If you're sowing, just say, Pastor, I'm sowing. I'm going now to sow. If somebody can put my cash app information in, I see seed coming in now. If somebody can put my PayPal information in on Instagram and Facebook, there are people that want to sow. Please send the information. And while you are sowing, I don't want you to hang up because I'm getting ready to release the word of the Lord by way of prayer over your life. I want to pray for you. I feel God. Uh, 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 God's presence now. And I feel the anointing for change. I feel that God is even changing your heart now. He's even changing the inside so that you can receive this new thing that God wants to give to you. And I say tonight that the Lord is going to do this work in you and you will not revert back to what you used to be. You will not go back to what was, but you will embrace now what is. You will walk into this new place. You will take on this new nature. You will take on his identity. You will walk in his spirit. You will walk in this new character. You will walk in the uh, 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 authority and in the boldness and in the humility of our Lord and Savior. You will not continue to walk in the old man for that man dies tonight. God, I thank you for these that are on this live, for those that have joined me by way of Cyber Church. I thank you, oh God, that they have received the word gladly. I feel the receptiveness. And God, I thank you that this word has not fallen on deaf ears. I thank you, oh God, that this word has taken root into their spirits and there is nothing that will come to pluck this word out. I pray, oh God, that they will unapologetically embrace newness and not feel ashamed, not feel guilty, not feel unworthy. I pray that they will not even sabotage this new season from happening. I pray, oh God, that they will stop wrestling with you and this, this war that they have been fighting with themselves. I pray, God, that tonight the war stops. I pray, God, that tonight the fight stops. I pray, God, that tonight the tug of war ceases. I pray, God, that tonight they come in oneness. They come in unity with your plans for their life. I thank you, oh God, that they have made a conscious decision to die to their will and to embrace your perfect will for them. I thank you, oh God, that their desire to please I and to do it their way has been put to death. Glory to God. I thank you that it's now, God, whatever you want, however you want to use me, whatever you want to get to me, whatever you want to get me to too, God. It is yes, Lord. I thank you for the spirit of surrender. Glory to God that these your sons and daughters have even as I am praying. I thank you, oh God, that they're a heart of flesh. That spirit that was so stubborn and so stony and so hard that didn't want to bend that tonight is bending. Tonight is pliable. Tonight is flexible. Tonight is offering no resistance but it is surrendering totally to your will and to your way. I thank you, oh God, that you are confirming that where they're going to is so much better than where they are, where they're going to in their mind, where they're going to in their emotions, where some of them are even going to geographically, the new things that's happening for them physically, the new things that's happening for them spiritually. God, I thank you that is far more greater is better than that which they have been experiencing. Experiencing, And I thank you, oh God, that they shall never go back. They 
they will move forward. They will not remember the former things. Glory to God. They will continue to romanticize and reminisce with the past. Glory to God. But they will move forward in you. Thank you for this new season. Thank you for new relationships. Thank you for new mindsets. Thank you for new opportunities. Thank you, hallelujah, for fresh revelation. Thank you for new teaching, for rebuilding the right way, for breaking down, glory to God, uh, these statues and idols that we've set up in our lives. Thank you, oh God, that tonight they're being broken. They're broken into pieces, never to be resurrected again. Glory to God. I thank you that all things are being made new for these that are listening under the sound of my voice. Glory to God. I thank you for newness. Then they, we will not fight it. We will not fight it anymore. But we submit, we yield, and we say, yes, Lord, you can do it. You can say it. You can give it. You can pull it. You can break it. Whatever you want to do, God, we say yes. And I thank you for these that are sowing seed tonight. Glory to God. I thank you for these that are sowing tonight. God bless every seed sower. Hallelujah. God, let them not miss. Let them not lack. Let them not struggle, but cause them to even know that because they sowed into good ground, this is the blessing that's being released because of their seed tonight. Remind them, oh God, that this seed of change has ushered in a new change for them. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity to be your voice. And I pray, God, that we did what made you smile. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for newness. Thank you for newness. Thank you for newness. Thank you for newness. I love you all. I pray that you've been blessed. Please go share it with somebody that needs to hear this word on tonight. Y'all have a good night. Mm -hmm.